The Wide Wide Sea by Hampton Sides. We've got a good one today. This is the author of Ghost Soldiers, another book that I've read and enjoyed. One of my favorites of last year about the Army Rangers' first covert mission to release these prisoners from Japanese prison called Kabanatuan. It was covert and they hiked across the land and you can go check it out on YouTube, but that's a really good book. I liked his writing style and I got lucky because the publishing company actually sent this to me in the mail, made me feel very important and got to read it. So it was a really fun, I probably wouldn't have picked this up otherwise, but uh, this was a really fun book. This is about the third voyage of Captain James Cook, who I'd always heard about, but didn't know the specifics of what he had accomplished and who he was as a person. This is specifically on his third voyage. It's not a biography, but it is a lot of fun. Um, it, it really, he's traveled the entire world. It sets up this argument of whether or not exploration is a good thing or a bad thing. Because ultimately, spoiler alert, he was killed in the Hawaiian Islands by the natives. But he was an older man. He had successfully traveled and explored to uh, many, many, many Polynesian islands without trouble. And so, of course, today there is an obelisk in his honor on a little plot of land on one of the islands in the Hawaiian chain, which I was going to pronounce, but I'm going to skip it, but it starts with a K. You can go Google it. You just go obelisk, Captain Cook, and people visit. They hike down. They take pictures. My wife and her family actually went and visited uh, but it is actually technically British territory on the Hawaiian island, and it's kept up. But people vandalize it occasionally because, of course, some people don't think that it was set a good precedent to explore the native islands. It was just leave them undisturbed. And so it sets up an argument about whether exploration is a good thing or a bad thing. Or in particular, they like to say colonization, but he was not an imperialist. He of course, reported his findings to the Admiralty in England, but he was not for imperialism. He had great respect for the cultures. He was actually one of the more kind captains that uh, rarely mistreated people. And so, by all means, he was sort of the best of the best when it came to captains in the British Navy. So, there's an argument in both sides, of course, on both sides, of course, and this book sort of stays away from it, but does address the fact on page one that the obelisk gets vandalized, and so it's kind of up to the reader to decide whether or not exploration of these islands is ethical or not. Um, so, all that to say, the third voyage was crazy. It was filled with adventure. I mean, he was an older captain. He was really entering retirement, and they're like, hey, we got to find a Northwest Passage. You know, we've had all these ships go, and they fail, and they get stuck in the ice and people die but we got to keep looking and so they're going to find a northwest passage that will take you from the western side of north america all the way to the atlantic ocean on the east coast and avoid the southern waters where the spanish are and there was sort of this race and we want to be able to trade with india and china and not have to go through spanish waters and it was very very interesting so they send captain cook on his third global voyage to find this northwest passage and this trip is four years, and it's thousands of miles. I mean, it's like four or 5,000 miles on ship. He's got a ship fleet of two. It's the HMS Resolution, the HMS Discovery. I recommend going and YouTubing those two ships and Googling those two ships and getting you a visual for what they looked like. Very beautiful ships. And they encounter storms and native populations from all kinds of different islands. They start, they go to New Zealand, Australia, um, Said Arca, Archipelago, Arca, I forget, it's been a while since I've read this book, but it's that desolate island. They even go there. And then, of course, through Tahitian Islands and Cook Islands, what are known as the Cook Islands today, and then uh, the Society Islands. And ultimately, he discovers the, the chain of the Hawaiian Islands, and that's his claim to fame, although he had traveled the entire world multiple times. So this guy was seasoned. He was one of their best, and this was a monumental voyage. Also fun that it happens to take place on July of 1776, same year that the American Revolution happens and King George is busy with his whole navy on the east coast uh, with the Americans revolting and so meanwhile all of that's going on unbeknownst to the crew of these two ships they have no idea because when they leave that's just kicking off so four years later they come back and they're shocked which is amazing to me because they're on the west coast of the, of the United States at that time exploring. So they had no idea what was happening. 
Captain Cook traveled with a chronometer, chronometer, chroma, chromograph. I forget. Forgive me. It's been a while. Go and look up. Uh, Hampton Sides has a YouTube video where he's at the bookstore in Washington D.C. It's called uh, uh, Politics and Prose is the name of the bookstore, and he gives an hour sort of uh, speech with slides of his travels to visit these locations. It's really great. He goes through the technology he discovered. Captain Cook discovered Tahitian massage. He was the first to record uh, the Polynesians surfing on waves, which they thought were incredible. Uh, they discovered uh, King George really tried to take a bunch of farm animals on the ships to the Tahitian Islands for them to have agriculture and to start farming with animals. Um, boy, they discovered tattooing. They discovered the ancient religions and spiritual uh, worship that the Polynesians did. And, of course, the chain of Hawaiian Islands. So, I mean, a lot happened, and his mission was simply to find a Northwest Passage and deliver these farm animals. There was a Tahitian, uh, really a Tahitian prince that they bring back to England for two years who is introduced to weapons and fighting and uh, European, Western European culture, uh, horseback riding, farming, the Society of England. I mean, his portrait is, is painted by the, the finest artists in all of England, and then they take him back to Tahiti and wanted him to rule to an extent over certain, uh, a certain island. And he wanted to get revenge on the people of Bora Bora who had attacked his family years prior at when he was a child. So, I mean, you got so many different storylines and people happening in this book that make it really interesting. And if you look, you go to Google and you type in Oh My, O-M-A-I, uh, you'll find the portraiture of him. And it brings this whole story to life. You've got Captain Cook, you've got Oh My, you've got all his officers and and Hampton does a good job of going through all the journals and, and recorded ship logs and all this research, very voluminous amounts of research, to write this book. And he doesn't leave a stone unturned, really. It, it was fascinating. And so there's a lot out there that you can look up and, and research, especially pulling up pictures of these islands. And, when, you know, it's chapter to chapter takes you from island to island for the most part. It's really cool how he wrote that because each chapter is a new adventure. And uh, they're short and easy to read, and the book's pretty short. Um, and um, But look up the island as you're reading the chapter, and you can see what you're reading about in modern times and how it's changed, and it's really, really neat. So it was a, it was a whole uh, genre of story I would have never picked up or been interested in, but they sent it, and I read it, and it was written extremely well and captivating stories and now I know about Captain Cook and uh, his adventures and a big part of world history. Uh, I mean so many things are named after Captain Cook and I never was familiar with his story and his life and how he was as a person which seemed to be very mannerly and very respectable and kind of quiet and respectful of the natives and I mean as a gentleman if you can really think of it that way. So uh, Captain Cook, uh, The Wide, Wide Sea by Hampton Sides. I highly recommend. Check it out.